welcome welcome i hope you had a wonderful week and are enjoying uh the creation of dash apps so in this tutorial i'm going to show you how to add these two buttons to the dash ag grid table we're going to add a delete button that will delete uh, rows and update the graph like this in this case a pie chart and we're going to add this add row button which will add a row at the very end that you can you can update as you wish right like this we'll say this is newspapers and there you go so this is this video will only focus on these two buttons i'm not going to show you how to add the pie chart or how to uh, create the ag grid uh, table i will do this in future videos over the next two months i'm going to do videos focusing on ag grid so don't forget to sign up to my youtube channel turn on the alerts and um, uh, so you can get notified of every video that i do on the ag grid all right so to get started as always you can go to my GitHub. This link will be under the video. So go to the new AG Grid uh, directory that I created. And this AG Grid um, folder, go to row deletion. You can take a look at the finance survey that I downloaded from Kaggle. You can see what the, the rows and the columns are going to be called. Uh, but most importantly, go to add delete rows.py. Copy all this code like this and add it to your computer. And once you have it in your computer, uh, make sure to install these libraries with pip install, and then run, run, the, uh, run the file, run the app. Uh, in this case, you would install dash ag grid, um, the A2, this is an alpha version. Uh, the full version will be out by Plotly in, in a couple of weeks. Um, so you can you can uh, install uh, later versions if you want, uh, but don't worry. I don't think too many things, too many properties or or attributes will change in the full version. In case it doesn't work, just install this so you can see it work correctly. All right. So like I said, um, I'm going to teach you how to add these two buttons to your AG Grid table. Uh, so the first thing we're doing is we're in, uh, adding, incorporating this CSV sheet uh, from GitHub into this one right here, into our pandas data frame, right? I'm going to skip this column definitions. I'll do this in a future video, introduction to AG Grid. I'll skip the default column definitions. Um, here is the table, and you have different properties to create your AG Grid table. The most important one is the row data property. This is where you put your data uh, as a dictionary format so your AG Grid can display all the all these rows, can display the data. Um, so we'll close this for now. And then we have our layout. And our layout looks pretty long, but it's pretty much just rows and columns. And on the left side, we have a dash bootstrap card where we have the table, and underneath the table we have two buttons, the delete button and the add button. See, the DBC card, the whole table, and then delete and add button. And then to the right, the width column five, this one, here we have another DBC card where we have an empty div. So in this div, inside this empty div, we're gonna put the pie chart. All right. Now we do this with the callback. If, for example, we, if for example we hashtag out all this callback information, let's do it like this. You'll see that we won't have the pie chart because the pie chart is only created inside this callback. We only have the ag grid and the delete and row buttons don't do anything. All right. So let's go into the callback. There are two callbacks. The first callback, which we're going to focus on today is going to add the delete button and the, the add button. It's going to add data or delete data from the AG grid. And the second callback is just a pie chart. I don't want to focus on this today because this will be a focus of future videos. But in essence, we're just saying if, if the row, uh, if the data of the AG grid is changed or the cell value is changed, if any of these are changed, take the new data 
make it a pandas data frame, and then create uh, a pie chart and return this return this pie chart px plotly express pie chart inside the DCC graph, return it as the children of the pie breakdown. Remember, this is the children. This is the HTML uh, div. So it's going to go in here. It's going to go like this. Children, children equals DCC graph and whatever we built there, right? Uh, figure equals pi x, uh, pi, px pi, and so on and so on and so on. So that's what we're doing inside this div. We're going to return that. Okay. So, whoops. So this was, so this is the second callback in the pie chart. Now, this callback, the first callback, is where we're adding the delete and add row button and do it and updating the table. So let's see how this is done. So in this callback, our two inputs are going to be the end clicks of the delete row button and the add row button, right? This is the ID. End clicks just counts the number of times the button was clicked. If the button was clicked once, this is one, then it's two, then it's three, then it's four. If the add row button was clicked, one, two, three, four, right? It just adds, it just, this number goes up. So anytime either of these things were clicked, the, the callback function is going to be, is going to be triggered. This whole, whole callback is going to be triggered. Now, what happens here? Here we're saying, if um, the callback context, this is just imported at the very beginning, callback context. It's just to realize, to identify which button was clicked. If the triggered ID of this callback context equals add row button, right? If it equals this, it means the add row was clicked. And if the add row was clicked, then do something. We'll, we'll, we'll go over this in a second. Do something and return. The first object you return is false. And remember, the first object in the return function is always returned to the first component property of the first output, right? So in essence, if the add row button was clicked, return false. So delete selected rows will be equal to false, right? And delete selected rows, if you want to read more about it, just go on to go to the data table, control left click, you can open this and then control F you can read more about it. Delete selected rows. If true, the internal method will be called. So it's a Boolean. It's either true or false. So whenever I click on the add row button, we'll return true because we don't want to delete anything. It return false because we don't want to delete anything. But if the callback context, if the triggered ID is delete row button, this means that the delete row was clicked right then return true which means the the least selected rows will be true so any any checkbox that was selected will be true and will be deleted like this see how the pie chart look at these last four one two three four five now let's delete them delete and you'll see that the uh, pie chart was was updated as well because we um uh this is this is true and here we have uh, a pie chart that is updated whenever the data is, is new data. But the point is, whenever you click on a checkbox and you click delete, it deletes this row. You see this row has disappeared, right? Because this is true. In essence, it's just like saying, take this, copy, put it in the data table like this. And whenever the checkbox is a row was checked and the delete button was clicked, it does this, that, true, all right? That's what it does. But this is dynamic, so we cannot put this here because this will be static and this will be always true. We only want it to be true when the delete button is clicked. Okay, so now you understood the delete button. Now let's go into the add button, right? Now if the add button was clicked, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new dictionary. We'll call it new row. And the dictionary will be, um, the, the a representation of each and every column and what data we want in there. So we have six columns here because we have six columns 
in the CSV sheet, six columns, six columns, right? Oops, don't want to move them. Um, and we'll say the first column or the first column or the first item in the dictionary will be gender and it'll be an empty text. There will be nothing there, a row, an empty text. Second column will be age, we'll put zero, money will put zero, stock market objective and source also will be all empty information. I don't want to assume anything, so everything will be empty. So we take this new dictionary, we'll turn it into a pandas data frame, right? And then we can add this, this pandas data frame one row. We can concoct it like almost like merge as to the end of this original data frame. Now, where is this coming from? This data is this data. And this data is the last thing in the callback. It's the state. Remember, the difference between state and input is state does not trigger the callback. If the data changes, nothing happens. If the data in the AG grid table changes, no, nothing happens with the callback. Only when buttons are clicked because they're inputs, the callback will be triggered. But we can still take the data. Even though nothing changes, that the, the callback is not triggered, we can still take the data because we need it here, right? The data. Anytime uh, a, a add button is clicked, a new dictionary is created with all the column information. And this uh, new dictionary, this new row, will concoct it, pandas, data, um, pandas concoct method, will concoct it with this the original uh, uh, data that we have, right? So this is the updated table. And then we have to um, call the to dictionary method because we have to turn this into a dictionary because this whole object is returned to the second output, to the raw row data. Remember, the row data is the property of AG grid table that reads all the data into the table. Right. If this was empty, let's do none. Let's see what happens. This was empty. I think it can do none. You see, then this is empty. So I think it's even a mistake. Um, but there's nothing in there, right? So you essentially you want to return this new data, all of this right here. Duck updated table like this, like that this new data, right? But this is also is dynamic. Be at the, the, when the app first loads, we take the, the global data frame, the original data frame, and then when we add, uh, when we press the add row button, at the very end we'll have a new row, and then it, it concocts, it uh, adds itself to the original data frame, and then we return it as information, we assign this information to the row data property. This is the add button was clicked. If the add button, if the delete button was clicked, then we do no update, right? This is a, uh, we import this no update uh, method and we won't update this new, this second object, this second um, uh, output, the row data, because we don't want to update anything that the add button was not clicked. It was only the delete button that was clicked. Okay, so we see that we add here, we can add stuff, and the more buttons, the more times you click this, every time you click this, a new row is added. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was um, fairly easy to understand. Again, AG Grid, it, dash AG Grid is a new feature, and I'm very excited about it. And over the next two months, three months maybe, I'll create videos about this. So don't forget to sign up to uh, my YouTube channel, turn on your alerts, and if you'd like to support the education that I provide, um, thank you. You can uh, become a member on my YouTube uh, channel or you can, can become a member on my Patreon, whatever you prefer. Uh, thank you so much. Always remember, we're better together, so help each other out. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.